people says you are. So let's say you have a podcast and in that podcast, you have an amazing conversation about your solution. That clip, 30, 40 seconds a minute, you have that, run an ad against it because you have it from the podcast. Now you don't have to create the advertisement. You are who Google says you are. Talk about it, turn the camera on and people will find you. Right, so before we go on to questions, this is so crucial and I want to show you guys this. This is actually statistics from Google. So Google, what's interesting, what they did was, Google said, what makes a customer buy something from someone? You have a product or service, what makes someone buy something from you? So they looked at people's like Google history. So it says for someone to buy someone something from someone, they have to, to consume seven hours of your content. So if I want to buy something from you, can I go and I've Googled you, can I consume seven hours of your content? Can I read a newsletter that you've written? Can I watch some listen to some content that you've posted? Can I do that? Up to seven hours. Of course, you have a podcast. That's you're going to clock up that seven hours very easy. Someone can go in and learn what they need to learn so they can buy from you. So 11 touch points. Can they engage with you through social media? Can they, do they see you on their mailing list? Do they see you in person doing workshops like this? Right? Different places and four locations. Are you present on LinkedIn? A lot of people here, if you have a business, maybe it's business to business, and LinkedIn is huge. So now if you have a podcast, you have content, you can get content from your podcast, pop it on LinkedIn. I do what I post about 25 times a day on LinkedIn. So are you present on these different locations? You want to become the person that gets the deal before you've even offered your solution. People don't care so much about the product or service. They care about you. So can they go in and consume your content? Can they listen to what you have to say before they've ever met you? And that's why it's so powerful. The reason I'm standing here in this room presenting in front of you guys is because I, have, I can check all these books. If someone wants to do business with me, I'm sleeping. They can go in and watch seven hours of my content. And what's great about this, this is long term. I, I spoke with a kid from Airbnb and I was just talking to him. And then I was talking to him about podcasting. And he said to me, I said, have you ever bought from someone that you've watched a podcast from? And then he said, there was one person. I kept seeing his thumbnails on my YouTube channel. I never clicked on his videos, scroll, but then I'd see his clips on Instagram and different platforms. We are putting on an event and a workshop of a lifetime. I am hosting a workshop on personal branding, how to change your life through your personal brand. So we are excited. I cannot wait to get things going and show you how you can document your life and change it through the art of your personal brand. I'm gonna see you guys soon. For about six months, he never even touched his content. But because he kept seeing him in different touch points, he watched the podcast, I think two hours of the podcast, he bought from that person. Because he kept seeing that person everywhere. And now we can all do that. There's no excuses now, right? So this is a very important rule, 7 11, 4, um, it's really massive. So questions? Yeah, um, I was just looking at this from point of view of, you know, product market fit, PMF, that's really important. It's like, that's all, the startups is all an experiment. You don't know whether what your product or a solution is what the market wants. And at the end of the day, it's all about the market. Who's your target market? Are they going to buy from you? Are you so different that they want from you? So, you said a lot about the content, that's great. Product market fit, how do we, you know, make that the gold combination? So, can you give an example? So, I guess like, for example, Airbnb. Mm -hmm. if, if, if it was a chain, chain maker because Airbnb was able to link homes that could be vacant for periods of time with customers who wanted to find a place to stay, they built a platform, got a market fit. It worked really well. There are a lot of competitors that do that. Um, probably not as well as Airbnb because they're the market leader. So, just to tie in what you talked about, content. That's that's a great point, especially with Airbnb, right? They did well. Middleman, they came in and did amazingly well. I think with Airbnb, I also look at the founders. Now, there's one of them. I'm not sure his name, but I watched him on a podcast, and I'll just speak from a personal, you know, experience, right? I, I may not even answer this question correctly, but I listen to a, uh, the, a podcast of Airbnb and how they started the company. The vision, how people told them no, how people told them you're crazy to do Airbnb. What makes you think you can you know, do something like that? 
And so that story, that vision, of course, Airbnb have already born, but maybe is that what will separate them from the rest? The vision and the, the founders and being able to watch and consume that content? So I'm not too sure if I answered the question correctly. Yet. I, 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 I do believe like, when you, when you start as an entrepreneur and you have a passion, it's very good to just put yourself out there because nobody going to know what is your potential solution to the market. And then I think along the way journey, you're going to analyze what is missing. Okay. For example, me, I started as a, I have an evolution right now, and I started as a founder practitioner, like sexual thing. And then I realized it was a concept completely new for the culture in Australia, even though there is so many things that are very open-minded and others, and others are closed. But on the side, I do have a podcast which is called like Sex, Love, and Energy. So we talk about it, but in a different way. People who are involved in this, and I come across with amazing content, and people want answers because there is no education. And I think it's a good way to understand what the market wants, but if you are not to show what are you offering? It's going to be very, very difficult to understand the other side. Me, I think it's good to put your content out there. Of course, you know what you're passionate about, what you want to put out into you know, the universe. Um, slowly, um, people out there will like buy the responses, you'll see what gets more traction, and then through that, mm -hmm. you can give more of that stuff. And yeah. you just keep niching. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Because there's a saying that people don't necessarily know what they want, yeah. but they can react to stimuli. So, so you produce right. something and they like it, then you're like, that works. Yeah, I might go there yeah. more. But yeah. maybe something else you did, not much traction. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and think about that, like let's say with Airbnb, you have that idea. What about if you created some content in terms of like, hey guys, I have this idea in my mind, you know, and, and talk about it and document that journey, you will see from the, from the market, right? And people, yes, that's a great idea, okay, go for it, right? Exactly. So that's a great, great point. Yeah, it's like, like essential to be successful because at the end of the day, all of us, we are unique. We have something to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And, and, and just touching on that point, like, we're all unique. A lot of people talk about oversaturation in the market. Oh, there's so many other podcasts. Uh, that's what people say. No, there's no such thing as oversaturation. What you love, what your idea is, you're even contemplating about the product. You don't know if there's a market for it. Just put yourself out there and you'll be found. There's no such thing as oversaturation. Your unique gift, your startup is the gold mine. You're the gold mine. And... It's about putting that out there. Do you um, use sponsored ads? Do I use sponsored ads? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Can you find well, any value in them? In, 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 in paying for ads? Yeah. Yes. So I think uh, that's a great question. So what you could do is, before you put in pay for the advertisement, put it on your organic social media first. See if people like it first. Because when you sponsor it, it's just putting like fuel on the fire. So you put it out as organic content, and then once you see what does well, what performs well, what people are reacting to, then you run the advertisement against that. So yes, yeah, sponsored ads are great, but you've got to first master organic social media content, right? Because when you play around with it, you could do something, hey, my name's Lois, guys, I have this product, let me show you how it works. You put, look, you do this, put it on your organic, see what people are saying, commenting, liking, right? And then you say, okay, that content did really well, people liked it, I have some extra money, now let me run ads against it. So let's say you have a podcast, and in that podcast, you have an amazing conversation about your solution, that clip, 30, 40 seconds a minute, you have that, run an ad against it, because you have it from the podcast. Now you don't have to create the advertisement. Now you don't have to go and pay someone. You don't have to go and pay someone, oh, help me create this ad. Yeah, you can do that the more higher budget, but you can just, you're the content. You have the podcast, run an ad against that. See it do well organically. So that's very important. You are who Google says you are. Actually ask your question. I want you to think about this question. Are you an authority figure in your space? I know you're an entrepreneur, well, you're a solopreneur and you're determined, you're a thought leader. But the question is, are you an authority figure in your space? Because let's be honest, how are you gonna separate yourself from your competitors? Where is your personal brand? And you know what? We have actually something very special for you. Follow me. You see, we have a scorecard, right? So you can actually evaluate 
if you're an authority figure in your space because at the end of the day when you are you separate yourself from your competitors that is where opportunities come to you because your brand is strong you have brand equity so for you to actually see how long away you are from that or if you're close there the link in the description you can fill out a scorecard and this scorecard is amazing because it lets us know and see where you are and it's just for free for you to actually see where your business is where you are as a solopreneur and how you're going to get to that level of being an authority figure in your space because you see here at ets rumbasha media i'm going to be honest with you we are at limited capacity we only want to be able to tailor our clients to the ones we know we can deliver value because value takes time and we want to be able to work with your business but the scorecard is actually just for you to see where you are and are you an authority figure think about it and we'll see you link in the description